Hello friends, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about a very important concept. So you, anybody who is a data engineer would be hearing about different kind of storage formats. Row based, column based storage formats or row based, column based oriented databases. Now what does that mean? How is a row based one different from, from a column based one? When should they be used? And what are the pros and cons? So we will look into these in detail today along with examples. So let's get started. First of all, when we talk about database storage formats, there are two formats in which uh, database, the data that we are writing into a database is stored. So when we are writing a data to a database, that means we are inserting data into a table in the background that data is getting stored on the disk in some format. Now that format can be either row oriented or column oriented. And how do they enhance the performance of our query is what we want to look at. Or which format is better suited and why. So let's take an example. Let us consider that this is a table, an employee table, which has four columns, ID, name, age, and gender. It's a simple table I've taken as an example. And you see one column, the first one is row ID. Now this is something that the database itself generates. For every row, the database needs to refer to a row. So it generates a row ID. This is not the primary key of the table. The primary key of the table may be the ID column that we have. So this is something which is auto-generated by the database itself to identify each and every row. So this is how your table would look like. But when you actually try to store this data or the data is getting stored on a disk, how would it get stored? So throughout this uh, talk, we are going to consider three types of queries and look at how row-oriented versus column-oriented works because that will bring uh, clarity in terms of how it is getting stored or how efficient it is. So the three queries are one is a simple selection of a column called name column from the employee table and there is a where clause which says the age is 19. The second is where we are selecting all the columns from the employee table where your ID is 1 and the third is where we are using an aggregate function. We are doing a sum of the ages from the employee table for all the employees that are present in the table. A row oriented format, how would that look like? So when we are inserting data into a table in a database, if the underlying storage format is row oriented, what will happen is the table data will be stored as rows. Just like how you see the row in a table, if the format behind in the disk will also be the same. So what will happen is we never fetch or do IO in the form of fetching one one row at a time. It's always a block IO. So in a single block IO, you would be fetching multiple rows based on how wide the table is, which means how many columns are there in a row, how big a row is, it will decide in a block how many rows will get accommodated. But essentially, a single block IO call will fetch multiple rows. When you fetch one row, ideally you are getting all the columns that are present in the row. So one single block IO will return multiple rows and each row will have all the columns that are present in the row. That means once a row is fetched, there are no more IOs to be done to fetch the columns. You get all the columns. More IOs would be needed when? When you want to fetch a particular row in a table. Because what you have to do, if you are looking for a particular row in a table, one single block IO may or may not give you that row back. Right? So you have to scan the whole table, which means you have to do multiple block IOs to get to the row that you are interested in. Sometimes you may get it in the first IO call, sometimes it may take multiple IO calls. But essentially, row oriented means the way you see the data in the table, exactly how it is getting stored in the backend as entire row with all columns together in a contiguous block. So that is known as the row oriented storage. Now, this will tell you how it is getting stored. If you consider all of these blue blocks, right? these blue blocks as getting fetched in a single block IO. That means two rows per block IO are getting fetched. So you if I have to search for details of John, I may have to do three uh, IOs to get to this one. Okay? Now, 
Now let us look at one of each of the queries one by one. So if the query is select name from employee where age is 19 and if I am using a row oriented storage what will happen is I will have fetch the first block which, which has two rows but it doesn't have the particular employee which I am looking for. Then I will fetch the other row. This also doesn't have that employee. Then I will do the third IO. This is where I am getting my record where age equal to 19. Which means in a row oriented storage, if a query is of this type where I am fetching a particular column name for a condition on a column age, I have to still go through every block till I get that particular column which satisfies my condition. So the moment you get the third block, you get this age in 19 and you can fetch the name John. This is the number of operations or IOs it will take in a row oriented storage. Now, we look at the second query which is select star from employee where id equal to 1. Now I am looking for a particular id but for all columns for that id. What will happen? Again I will fetch the first block but here in the first block itself I got id equal to 1 and in one fetch I got all the columns. So I can actually pull up all the columns. So the star condition can be satisfied for id 1 in one IO call. If the ID I was looking for was 3, I would have to make 2 IO calls because I will not get it in the first block, I will get it in the second. But in this, the benefit is we are getting all the columns together once we fetch the row. So that's how the second query will look like. Which means, but if we are doing this, the problem will arise when? When the row is going spanning multiple columns, meaning uh, the row is spanning across multiple, not columns, multiple blocks, which means uh, what is happening is if the row is too big, the table is very wide, the row may get split into blocks. The entire row with all the columns may not fit into one block. In that case, you would still need multiple IOs for the scan, right? And if you do not get your ID in the first hit, you have to scan through the entire table, so fetch multiple blocks. That is when you would need to do multiple IOs. The last query was select some age from employee, the aggregate function. In this case, what will happen? We have to look at the age and we have to do a sum of it. That means I have to fetch all the blocks since it is a row oriented format. It is fetching me all the row with all, all the columns. So if I fetch first block, I am getting two rows with all the columns, but I need to do a sum on all the ages. So I have to fetch all three rows and then only I can do a sum. So I will do a sum of all of these ages once I read all blocks. So there are multiple IOs that, has hap that are happening to get each and every row from the table. So this is how the queries would perform when we are talking about a row oriented storage. Now let us quickly look at the column oriented storage and we will look at the same set of queries to see how many IOs would be needed. So we can do a fair comparison. Now when we are talking about a column oriented storage or a column oriented database, basically a column oriented database means that the underlying storage is column oriented. And as the name suggests, what we are doing now we are not storing the entire row together. We are storing the columns together. So how the data is getting stored? It is getting stored in the form of a column. What that means is, if there are four columns, ID, name, age and gender, the ID column, all the values for ID column. So if there are 10 rows and we have the ID column, all the 10 values for ID, they will be stored together. The name column and if we have 10 rows in the table, all the values for name will be stored together. So we are grouping them as per column. That means <clears throat> if we have to fetch values for a particular column, it will be easy. It will be one single IO because all the values for a particular column are stored together. But if we have to fetch multiple columns, then we have to do multiple IOs. If multiple columns are to be uh, selected, there will be multiple IOs, but for one column, if we are trying to select all the values, it will be less IOs. So let's look at an example to make it more clear. <clears throat> now this is a column storage. Uh, do you see the difference between the row and the column? In the row, we were storing the data with the entire row together. Now what we are doing? If you see the row key is getting repeated, the row ID. So 1001 row ID, ID was 1. 1002 row ID, ID was 2. 
so this is how all the values for a particular column that is id column are getting stored together next is the column named name so all the values for name column are getting stored together and they are identified by this row key similarly age is all the values are getting stored together and gender also so the representation in the back end is very different from the row oriented storage now what is the problem here first let's talk about the benefit the benefit is if i have to get all the values for a particular column it is very easy if i want to get all names i will just do read this block and read all the names if i have to get age i can just do one io and read all the ages so this is very efficient if i want to do column level operations or the queries which are more to do with selection of columns or aggregation on columns deletion will become hard if i want to delete a record let's say record number 1001 or id number 1 that record needs to be deleted i have to delete from here from here from here from here from so i have to make four io calls to delete one single record because it the columns of a particular row are spread across because the grouping is as per column similarly addition of a new row is hard why because if i have to add a new row for each column i have to fetch and add here because it is grouped by column so deletion is harder than row oriented addition is harder when i say harder it is taking more io calls and one more thing is row id is getting repeated with every value of a column just to identify otherwise how will you know that this one id belongs to which row i cannot relate these four columns if i don't have a row id with this row id i can tell that id number 1 name is akash age is 25 and gender is male so there is a repetition of row key id for each of the column values so that's how a column storage looks like now let us look at the queries that we looked at earlier so the first query was select a name from employee where age is 19 now how will this happen i have to get the name but first i have to get to age so what will happen is i have to one do one io to select age 19 so age 19 corresponds to row id 1006 now i have to get the name so what do i do i directly go to this io block and reference the 1006 row id get the name john so there are two ios that are happening to fetch this employee name where age is 19 first for age is 19 i hit this block i select the row key id and based on that because database has their own linkage so we can just look at this linkage and find out john is the name so it is taking me two ios the second query was select star from employee where id equal to 1 now what i have to do the, the first ID, io i make is to search for id equal to 1 the moment i get id equal to 1 now what i have to do the row key is 1001 but i have to fetch all columns for this id that means i have to go through each and every block so it is a very heavy io operation because the row is spread across multiple blocks as the grouping is based on column if i have to do a select star type of a query i am not querying a particular column but i am querying all columns that means i have to fetch all the blocks it's very heavy io operation if you compare it with row oriented this is much more heavier then if you look at the third type of query when i am doing an aggregation on a particular column which means i have to sum the age from employee table that means what i have to just do one io which is going to take me to the age column and now this grouping has all the values for age so it is very easy in the row oriented format i had to pick all blocks scan through the entire table to do a sum on the age because it was arranged by rows but here it is arranged by column so the summing is aggregation is very easy it's a one io call and i can fetch all of the values and add them just one more to remember for simplicity i have shown it as one block but sometimes your multiple columns if it is a wide uh, it's a tall table means there are multiple rows and you have too many values for a column this may not be one block this may be split across blocks so to sum the age you may have to do two or three or four however ios depending on the number of blocks but it is much more efficient 
uh, to be done in a column oriented store storage this kind of a query so now do you clearly see the difference between a row oriented and a column oriented it it is not like row oriented is better or column oriented better is better it really depends on the way we want our uh, want our queries to be so we have to decide the storage based on the output how are we going to query our data and this is a summary of the pros and cons so row oriented is optimal for read and write column oriented is writes are slower as i said you have to span across the blocks because it is grouped by columns so it is slower writes are slower reads are quicker if you are reading particular column so typically row oriented storage are used for oltp kind of systems and column oriented are used for olap kind of system because in olap you would select few set of columns in oltp when you are inserting to there are a lot of insertions you will have to span across similarly efficient queries with multiple columns if there are multiple columns in your queries it is more efficient with row oriented because in one io if you fetch the row you get values for all the columns aggregation is not efficient compression is not efficient but on the contrast column oriented as we saw with the example also aggregation queries are very simple very efficient and compression is very efficient but when you want to span to multiple columns your query goes through multiple columns then it is not efficient because you have to do multiple ios for that each block corresponds to one column that is why so this is all in all about row oriented and column oriented how they differ in terms of efficiency and which one to choose based on your queries i hope this helped in clarifying this whole concept Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos every week thank you so much